The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Thursday, the 19th of May. We're looking at the Dow down uh, 290 points at 31,200. Took out that left side key support. The 30,000 level is really imperative to hold because not only is it a psychological level, but basically we're looking at that 30,000 30, level as important because in February of 2020, the high that was made at a peak D in the Chapman Wave monthly chart was 29,568. Once we start messing around with that 30,000 support and start to take it out, you can give back all the gains that have been made since that high of February. So what we are looking at here in the monthly chart, the key support on the left side, uh, intramonth so far has been taken out. The daily chart, the left side low of peak C, uh, of trough that on the way we down, we call them troughs, at uh, just at 31,272. Uh, we'll, that was taken out. Today we've gone lower. There are signs at this particular point that suggest that although overall the selling is just not done at all, on a very short-term basis, there could be some kind of a trigger to have a bounce of this 31,000 level in the Dow. Um, if you look at the uh, evening news uh, today, we, well, we can't look at it yet, but if we look at it after the close with applied materials uh, coming out with uh, and earnings and, and looking ahead and talking about whatever it is, after the conference, what happens tomorrow? Options expiration, monthly op op the monthly expirations in options, the third week, this is the monthly one, the third week of the month, third Friday, I should say, of the month. This is going to be really important because uh, applied materials has gone from the 146 round number high back in April of 2020, uh, 20, that should be 2022. Yep, 2022. Let me just double check. Did I forget to, uh, forget to update that? Yes, I did. 167. Oh, sorry. That was, oh, that was way back over here. Sorry. Um, this is the high that was made. Let me just get there. It is okay. One sixty-seven point oh six. The high that was made right there on the fourteenth of January of uh, this year. Uh, it was a one hundred fifty. Yeah. So one sixty-seven point oh six. It comes zooming down to the one twenty-five, one twenty-four area. Tries to rally, hits the 50 period moving average, makes a dreaded H pattern. That's the arch formation I always talk about. And the, I, this is a fantastic company in the semiconductors. But as, as you might recall, I've been looking negatively at the semiconductors since the high in the 8th SMH was made back on uh, at 318.82 the week of November the 26th. We made the double top, the left side, right side price. Uh, uh, Vertical test said that the technicals were way weaker on that retest back in December or January, January the week of the 7th at 318.69. These double tops have been just unbelievable. 318.82 in November, January 318.69, and then it just tumbles. That's like the dreaded age upside down. That's the uh, inverted reverse Y with those double tops, and then it comes down sharply. And we make a low in the two, what was the low on the uh, SMHs six sessions ago? It was 215.23. So some good news. This says to me, based on the daily and the weekly, we're not out of the woods in the semiconductor uh, index yet. And that would apply, of course, to applied materials. It would apply also to NVIDIA. I don't know when they come out with the earnings. NVIDIA has had, made a, a trough F, a little doji candle uh, in the 159-ish area. So it's gone from the uh, uh, the most recent high with a doji peak D, exactly the same thing with a D back in March in the 280 area. Just even from that level, let alone the 349 uh, all-time high, um, that's just saying that these semiconductors have been completely um, 
the selling pressure has just been intense. They've barely had more than a, a peak B before they failed to the downside in the dreaded H formation. So this is going to be important. What else is there this afternoon? Uh, applied materials. I don't think market movers. Yeah, actually, this is a market mover, but it's been a market mover to the downside. This is PANW. PANW. There we go. Uh, this is Palo Alto Network Cybersecurity made the most recent high at about 640, um, 647 high, all-time high, peak D in the, in the daily, makes this incredible arch formation, comes tumbling down, it was a peak D in the weekly, and a leg F going to a peak F this month probably confirm, confirmed, um, and this is really ugly, and this is the cyber security, this is an area that I just, I still don't understand why it's on, not on fire because every company needs cybersecurity. So I don't know quite what, what's going on there, but the whole area, look at HACK, which is the ETF. HACK goes from 67, 97, November, the week of November the 11th, makes this second big arch formation, dreaded H pattern, comes down, takes out the left side low, and is now trading at 45.28. Yes, it's uh, maybe a 30, 35, 36% decline, but at the same time, why is this not holding well? Surely every company needs to have some kind of cybersecurity crowds. Another one, absolutely, CRW, CRWD, uh, say has a, all have the same pattern. Um, and all I can say is that 242 round number high, that was the last high that was made in April. Uh, two, I think almost 298 was the all-time high. 298.28 was November's high. This is just telling us that the selling pressure is intense and that if, in fact, applied material doesn't give us uh, some some kind of good news to have at least a counter-trend rally in the, in the most important semiconductor area. Remember, I consider semiconductors to be the fuel of the 1900s, the 20th century. Uh, still now, today, oil is, is the fuel for the economy, but now we've got an, uh, as great a fuel, which is the chip, the whole se the semiconductor area. Chips are everywhere, every, every, everywhere. The, you went from just a handful in automobiles, maybe, what, uh, 12 years ago? It's incredible how many uh, semiconductor chips are being used. So we have to consider this is a tell for us um, how the market reacts on any good news, apply, applied material is going to probably be some kind of an arbiter of at least a decent bounce or a slump. So we'll see what happens there. Let's go on. We want to look at um, gold. As I said, gold was up nicely, up 28 bucks. Uh, that's because the dollar is moving down quite sharply, considering 105.01 in one, two, three, in four sessions, it's given back one, two, three, four, five six, seven, almost eight sessions worth of price movement. And it is a peak F, and I think I'm going to call this an F in the weekly chart. Let's see what happens. Only a C in the monthly. And that says, looking out, the dollar should still go higher. On the short term, I've been warning uh, subscribers that we've got to watch that that uh, real long from the uh, 90 area for since 2018. I'm, I'm suspecting I might want to take a little bit off. We've only taken one little bit off in the 96 area. Maybe it's time to take just a little bit off, but I still think we want to remain along the dollar for a long time to come. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 294, S&P's down 90, Basel trap. Tight conditions are, and I'll go to all the questions that came in. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, yes, we're back, and we're looking at the GDX up a dollar forty-nine at thirty-one point ninety-five in leg B. Still gray leg B. The stochastic still very weak at twenty-one percent. Bank D hasn't crossed positive yet. Uh, the nine is way underneath the fourteen period moving averages. So we have to consider this is going to be a test of strength. Um, I do believe that it is related to the pullback in the dollar. Let's see what the EUR USD is doing. That's the euro. Yep, nice move up. This is a continuation of leg B. It did that weekly uh, huge. Let me just do this. This is the, from 2000 and. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not 22. That should be 20. Yes, from the March 2020 low of 1.06364, the euro was screened up to that double top. Uh, that was in uh, January of 2021, pulls back, and then around about uh, June, it retests just below it with much weaker technicals uh, up in the one point. I didn't put that in because this gets smoothed out, but I'll, I'll do it now because I don't want to have to keep saying 1.23492. 1.23. Nine is that four two? I'll just put that in. What difference does it make? What difference does a fractional uh, difference make there? Um, yes, it does make a bit of a difference. But anyway, that's what I've got. And then it plunges to a lower low in a beautiful left side, right side price time match in the Chapman Wave methodology. The arch on the left, which is called um, the uh, RQ, I think it's called, or Kuro, yeah, Kuro, which is a quarter. Yes, Kuro is a quarter of the semi semicircle and that left side arch and then the right side arch went and it was three weeks late, three weeks late to get to that exact 1.063 level of March of 2020. They took it out, went below, and now it's gone more than three bars, that's three weeks because the weekly chart, below that left side low. So it has to generate a whole brand new buy signal to be able to overcome the weakness. And we'll see 1.070 is the first really strong nine period exponential moving average weekly resistance and then 1.081 will be the next one let's see what happens here let's see what's happened to the usd jpy in the same weekly chart 
Ooh, don't type it there. Type it. Took you so long to write all those numbers down. USD, JPY. This is the euro. This is the Japanese yen dollar currency pair. Um, yes, I do have a fib. I, occasionally, I'll keep those fibs because if it's not too messy, I like to keep it. Um, it went to a leg D, probably a peak D this week. It's already Thursday. I don't see how it's going to break the previous high that was last week's high of 131.34. Um, and it's trading at 127.36 peak D in the weekly chart. And I could do this. Let me do it rather with the, week, with the, with the monthly chart. There we go. Look, the monthly chart says we did. Um, well, how did that change? I didn't need to change that. That's where it was. Yep, that's where it was. So it did it exact to the same midpoint assessment that I did in the uh, euro dollar currency pair. You've got now in the. Uh, U.S. dollar Japanese yen, and it's gone to the high that was made back on June, the week of the 30th of June 2015. I used the midpoint of that peak C minus of the 30, week of the 31st of October of 2018, and that was at 114.58. The previous high was uh, one, 125.847, and it broke out. This one did it to the week. Bam, it breaks out above, and now it's, it needs to hold two out of three weeks above the high of 125.45, 125.84, and we'll see if it's able to do that. The technicals are still very strong. Let's look at the, um, let's see what's happening with gold in the weekly chart. Yes, you see the weekly chart is stuck in this arch, this, this cup formation that produces a U going to a W. So we're going to see what happens because the, the stochastic is just about to deflect lower if it holds very well on a weekly basis, sorry, on a monthly basis. Gold, in fact, could then retest those highs. Look how many times from the um, September 2011 high, there's a continuous contract, so the price might change a little bit. But from that high that was at 2147.2, September 2011, comes down to, I don't think it's still 111. Uh, 1170. One, oh. It's 1236 because it, it gets smoothed out. It's a continuous contract. The low of December of 2015 makes the, the arch, gosh, it makes a cup formation and it goes all the way to test that left side high of 2015. Uh, August of 2020, it goes to what? To 2118. And remember, the previous high was back in September of 2011 at 2147. How about that? Within 30 points, pulls back, and then it comes again very close. It goes to 2083. Unbelievable how that happens. And it keeps getting repelled. Is this the time? Is this the time that we see some kind of a change? Well, look at the dollar. The dollar's only in leg C in the weekly in the monthly chart, and it's broken above that, but so far for the month it's underneath 102.99, the high of um, 2020 and the high of 2017 of 103.82, it's under that high as well. Even though it's gone higher, it's gone to 103. No, I'm sorry, 105.01. So, yes, that's what we're looking at in the currencies. Let's look at silver. Look at this SI. Silver is trading very nicely. It hit the 14 period moving average after using the 9 period moving average as a springboard, and it's trading at 21, 90. Uh, up 0.36 is a good start. The MACD's just turned green. That's a that's a good good sign for silver. Stochastic's very weak at 36, but is rallying. On balance volume is very weak. Day is young. We'll see what happens. Next question. I, I had a question yesterday. I just didn't get to, I, and I can't remember quite what the question is. I just I know that I had to write down the symbol. The symbol is GPS. Oh, that's gap. Is that what the question was? For the, the YouTuber yesterday, the Tiger Tiger YouTuber, um, uh, it's pulled back. It's got an arch arch formation in the dreaded H after gapping down, couldn't fill the gap, and at the low today of 11.12, it is still above the low that was made of 11.07, just barely. That was on the 22nd. So these retail stocks. That's the reason why I say we could be making many lows, but it's not the low. It's just a low, and then we get. Uh, an attempt at a rally, and then we get a wash and we go to low lows. I'm hoping that 
we do get a very strong rally coming up real soon. That's the rally that's going to have another, at least a chance to look at the short side on the stocks that have really been decimated to the downside, rallying, and we'll see which ones have the strength to get buy signal to buy mode in the daily charts, or the ones that just have a nice big rally, but they just can't hold it, and then they will be ready for shorting going into, I think, some midsummer. Could I don't know if we'll see the low in midsummer, but my, my indications are with the VIX index right now uh, up. Uh, 33, 31.29, getting repelled in that Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone that today is so critical because of that 31,000 level on the Dow. We're only up, we're up to, we're down 260, up from the, very sharply up from the low. We're down 15 in the S&P. If we start to fail at, at 2.30 this afternoon, it could get ugly. We want to see a bounce going into the if you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, so let me uh, do this. So the question, I, uh, I, I believe it was GPS. Uh, that's what I wrote down, and I, um, I'm just going to go with that's what I wrote down. So, yes, the GPS, which is Gap Stores. So all the retail stocks, RTH, if you look at this, the retail sector has just been decimated over the last uh, three weeks. Um, I, I, all I can say is that this is a, an economic sign you've got to respect. Uh, one of the reasons why we've gone back to a big cash position, uh, having had – a number of stocks that we put in, um, either losing just a couple of percent, some of them made six to eight percent or even 11 percent of the low price single digit ones that we've had in the last couple of days been real nice. Um, what I am looking at here is that if the retail, together with the semiconductors, if the retail 
sector is now catching up to the weakness of the semiconductors. Remember, I treat the semiconductors as a core ingredient to the economy, uh, like copper or oil. The, the chips are, I mean, chips are there to stay. So we're looking at uh, the retail sector catching up. And basically what I would do, if you were looking to go long, a uh, question about, a, a, say, uh, Costco, or in this case, the question was GPS, Gap. Gap is a little different to Costco. So Gap stores is very, it's a specialty. It's had a terrible um, time since it made a high in the 30s. It's trading now at 11.22. The key low was March of uh, April of 2020 at 5.26. 5 All I can say is that it's got the pattern, the dreaded H pattern, sorry, it's got the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down, looks like an uppercase A in the monthly chart. I probably would say, if I, I don't know if the person was short, I'd just say stay short. What I would do is if it drops under under $11, at that point, I would just, as my, for money management, I would take out, oh, GPI. That, I think that's what it was. I, I said to myself, I, I, I don't think it's G. So, so all I'm saying is if you are... If you're waiting, if you're long, you're wanting to get in into this, just be careful. A, a, a stock that goes into the into the ten underneath ten goes to the single digits. Sometimes it's a real difficult time finding buyers. But if it's uh, uh, the pattern that we're looking at, the weekly nine is still way under the fourteen. GPI. Oh, I think it was GPI. What is GPI? I've got it all notated here. This is oh Group One Automotive. Ah, yes, it was. I'm absolutely sure now that it was. Um, this has made a little double top. 189.69 was a, a top about three weeks ago. It pulls back to the 200 p moving average, rallies again to about 109. This double top with much we with weaker technical says, be careful. Then you've got this. Now I have to look at it not just as a cup formation, but a potential rectangle. It's taken out the left side low. Today is a nice day. It's up 3.77 to 177.99. What I did, once I saw that, I said, hey, let's go back to AZO. Took a huge beating the other day with earnings disappointed under the 200 period moving average. AutoZone, Inc., Auto Parts, uh, made a peak D with an alternate count. So this is what I, I, I t tomorrow's technical Friday. I'm going to put it down here and I'm going to put AZO for Friday. I'll, I'll talk about this. Do you remember there's a technique that I said? I discovered this years ago. First of all, decades ago, I discovered this chap. Uh, this is called the instant restart, where you go to a peak D, and within three bars, you break out to the upside. That gives you the chance to go to a brand new buy signal to buy mode. But if it keeps going up and then pulls back close to the starting point, and then it eventually takes it out, but the technicals are still good enough, it could be what I, I, I typed it in here in pink. Chapman Wave unconventional flat base restart target is 1760. And I typed that in way back. I typed it in, I believe it was over there as it was pulling back. I did not see this for a little while that it actually took out that left side low and then screened to the top. And I put in the alternate count that it didn't look like a peak C. It looked like everything about it was a D. I have to go back to the instant restart and look what happened. It pulled back, and now the target is back to that 1760 level, and the low, in fact, was right here. So this is all in the order parts group, 1759, 1760. Oh, it hit it exactly. Unbelievable. I forgot to look at that. And it's still, I still call it a G slash C in the, in the monthly chart, and that says, hey, if you've got this kind of technical um, picture in the weekly chart, let alone the daily, um, is this going to really be a PG? We don't know yet in the monthly chart. But look, here's AAP, which is also this. Oops, don't type it there. Type it right here in the little rectangle. AAP is, this is, um, there we go. AAP is um, advanced order part. Oh, I used to, uh, for the last couple, for the last two weeks, for some reason, my mouse, I can't, you see this arrow? Well, I go to file, and then I would save, or I go to this little picture right here that says save, um, save all workspaces, and it won't click on. I can see everything. The price is all moving. 
but it's like there's a glass screen. I don't know what it is. I try to figure out. I had my man come over and look at it. I've got enough memory. Everything's there. I don't know what it is. I'm going to have to call Trace Station. I hate being that. I'll have to call it. So you know that I've had this notated from for years, no, decades, all of the AZO and AAP. So this went to a peak A, peak B. And other than that, Trade Station, I really like it. I mean, I've had it ever since it used to be super charts. So <laughs> that's quite a while. This is a peak E in the monthly. Let me just double check. I think that was a penny higher. So that's 21769. 21766. Nope, this is a peak E right here. And now we've got a peak F in the monthly chart. Who? Got to be careful. So if all of them are turning down, I would not be looking at um, GPI, GPI in a bullish way, other than that is holding much better than the others. And therefore, it could be a, a late bloomer and could still be digesting from the top. Um, and it's trading at 178. I. Would I short this at this particular point? I'd say, you know what, I'd give it two days if it's able to get to 178 right now. If it's able to get to 183 and try to fill most of this red candle from yesterday, I'd say maybe the others are better shorts. But would it be a short if it starts to fail and goes to 175? I would rather say, you know what, yes, I'd, put a, I'd short it, but I'd put a stop. 17, 178, so 17 bucks. I'd probably fit a fairly tight stop. I'd have it like a five-point stop on a $1,778 stock. Yes. So that's the way I would look at it. Okay, a couple of questions. No, GPI was a short idea. I missed it. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's in that category of the auto parts companies that are having a tougher time. A uh, question then came in about, uh, let me see how to put it down. Oh, here we go. Um, Cisco. Cisco, uh, thank you, GT. Uh, why Cisco's earnings are causing network stocks, Juniper and Broadcom to sink? Well, Cisco is down seven points at 41.86. Um, it made a high of 64.29 December the week of December the 31st, and that was a peak D in the monthly chart as well. This is just telling me that we're not ready for prime time in the market yet. Yes. Um, the easiest thing would have been just to have some shorts months ago and then just sit there saying, you know what, go where you want. I, I've been doing it the difficult way by trying to play the bounces and actually some of them have worked out really well. That's, that's hard work. Even though you do make money, it's hard work. The easiest is get the, get the shorts out, go with the tide. The tide says, go far. The majority of stocks are down. And Cisco Systems is one of those. I'll be back in a moment. Because of Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for valued tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. 81.34 was the high. Uh, All-time high in the XLP, uh, uh, yes, the XLP, which is the S&P Select Staples Spider Fund. I've been looking at this for some time and saying, hey, let's keep our eye on this because when those staples start to pull back, that's uh, GIS, which is General Mills, a whole bunch of them, you've got to be careful. Well, look at this, 81.34 trading right now at 70.36. That is a big move in the sector that was a leader, peak D in the, in the weekly, a leg E in the monthly. I have to respect this as saying the rotation now is starting to go to the areas that were the strongest, and you've got to think of it as where can we, where can we find the kind of support that says you could have a 30% counter trend rally um, and I don't think we're quite there yet. We're getting closer to at least a pretty decent rally, but a very strong one that almost gets people forgetting about the bear, bear market and saying, oh, this is a brand new bull market before it turns around and has a big retest uh, market um, earthquake and then aftershocks test at about the same level, a little higher or a little lower. We'll see what happens. So this is very important. So the, yes, the answer is, that GIS, which is General Mills, same pattern. And look at this beautiful, I spoke about this recently. Remember the double top 7380 on the 21st of April and it retests around about the 9th or so of May at 7399. How many times have we seen within pennies, major indexes retest those highs? Okay, here we go, questions came in. Amazon, where, where would a target be for Amazon? Amazon's gone from 337.73.08 all-time high back in, I think it was July of, yeah, July, the week of the 16th of 2021. Had the retest. Oh, I used to have that in. I, I must put it back in. The retest right there, and that was in uh, end of October, beginning of November, at 37.62 with much weaker technicals. In fact, the stochastic didn't even go over 80%. And whoops, it goes all the way down to the 2070s is trading right now at 2239. This is a really important moment. Is it able to get to a leg B or does it break down and all of a sudden it's down under 2000? Remember when we were here up in the 37, 3600 area, I said, I think that my target is 2600, 2650. Well, we went right through that uh, three weeks ago, just right through that and continued red candles all the way down to the low. Um, uh, just above 2,073. And that just says to me that if Amazon is in this situation, if Federal Express is in this situation, um, uh, going from a high at 319 uh, back in the week of the 28th of May of 2021, a year later, trading at 197, if UPS, this is now the shipping area for all Amazon's products, or not all of them, but a lot of them, I made a peak D in the monthly chart, peak F in the uh, weekly, and a D doji candle around about 220. Um, and now we're trading at 166 with a horrible candle today. 
you just have that's the reason why I said to subscribers we will build up cash we'll have these trades we'll have a lot of trades but the key key thing that I, I want to impress is we want cash ready for the, the the big the big load that comes in whenever it does come in and on the way we can have some stocks that we've tried to have stocks that maybe can hold up well they don't have to really break to the upside but they hold well it's money put to good use because if they come out of the strong and still hold um, they're going to be looking really good but I make stops pretty tight and if we're out we're out we can always get back in I have no problem I always feel for us it's fairly easy to make a six eight percent even a twelve percent uh, decline um, but wow you start getting to 18 and 22 percent it just sits in your head saying oh god I got to make it up now I can't take that chance because eh, no I'd rather be thinking so CrowdStrike thank you GT uh, GARP net loss attributable to CrowdStrike was 50.5 million compared to 24.5 million um, yeah, crowd, CrowdStrike reports third quarter fiscal year 2022 financial results. So that was a couple of weeks. Oh, that was in December of 2021. Oh, so I guess that's the reason why they have not been doing well. Um, Barron's, thank you for that Barron's quote. Stock investors are now starting to feel the five stages of bear market grief. So the more we get this kind of news, the greater the chances are that we will get some oversold balance. But let's just go through this again. SH, which is the S the S and P one to one short, is trading at uh, what is it called? It's called the uh, Pro Shares Trust Short S and P 500. It needs to get above 16.38 to start a leg D. So there's a lot here that tells me we're getting real close to an overbought situation in some of the technicals. The VIX index is stalling still. The day is young. I can tell you, I, I'm looking at this market. It is trading on thin, thin well, on thin ice, because um, the rallies have been very selective with select stocks, as, as someone said. Um, um, right here, Jamalai says, P, P, PLCE and BJ are up after earnings, and I think place that's children's place I haven't looked at it for ages I don't even think I've got it still notated so children's place yeah it's up but way it's way down from the 117 area it was in in 2021 Australian 45.70 so that's not a good sign and um, BJ I don't know if that's the symbol I haven't looked at that in ages yes uh, B, BJ is the um, BJ's wholesale club a huge red candle gap down yesterday and today tried to rally and it's it's up 2.98 at 56.48 but it can't yet it hasn't yet taken out yesterday's high gap gap down high of 59.48 so that's not a great chart pattern so this is I think the market is under pressure cash is king and on the short side yes but you've got to have you know if you were short like the DOGs the, the place that we'd often go to over the years um, look at those big drops to the downside. It would just take you out, and then you've got to get back in. So I always say the best is if you can get the turn at the bottom or the turn at the top because it gives you a huge cushion because then you can just sit back and say you can be as volatile as you want as long as you're making higher highs and higher lows or lower highs and lower lows. So we've gotten to leg D in the DOG. The uh, comparable SH I've shown you, uh, here's, uh, here's something that's also quite important, um, VNX.X. This is the dollar, VNX.X, no, dollar, VXN.X, there it is. So this is the Vixen, this is the NDX volatility index, had this incredible spiral, a uh, March of, law of 2020 to 84.67. It's gone as low as the uh, 18, is it? 18.01 level back in October of 2021, making higher highs. But you remember, in the Chapman methodology, although we occasionally do get legs D and E and F, I don't use that. This is just volatility. And uh, it can fail at a peak A. Uh, this happened to be a peak D, the high of uh, 2020, and then it plummeted. But look at this. 
Um, on a day like this, so such weak action, and yet the VIX is actually down 65 cents at 36.80, and the VIX itself uh, hit the trend line support, and now it's at the trend line resistance. It is up only 26 cents at 31.22. I'll be back for the final segment. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So, since I'm round number low on Tesla, but you remember what I said? I could be wrong. I'm not a psychologist, but I love to do this in the market. I've done it for decades and decades. I have always felt, you know, the same with CRM, which is uh, this guy whose name I always forget, uh, Salesforce.com CEO. When he lost his focus and started talking about books on uh, ecology and all that stuff, I said, oh, man. And he built the building, that icon to himself. I said, this is a big problem. And I think Tesla, uh, I think that Musk has lost his focus. Once he moves away from the building hangers that are, a mile long and he has uh, huge steel structures or whatever it is to build spacecraft or, or, or you know what you you know what you have to spend to build an automobile company it's unbelievable now he's talking about Twitter and to me I don't care anything about all the other ins and outs I'm just saying I think Musk has lost his focus and as a result Tesla is highly vulnerable and it's trading at 714 I would not be surprised if it tests 600 over the next coming weeks. That's just the way I'm looking at it based on other things. The technicals seem to confirm that, but I'm talking about Tesla uh, as a Musk entity. CF, 
CF is CF Industries Holdings, Hydrogen, Nitrogen Products, Clean Energy, Fertilizer, Emissions, etc. In a trading band at 98.39, but it is showing signs of a struggle here. It needs to hold, it's at 98.39. If you are long, I'm going to make the recommendation of taking just a little bit off and we'll, we'll talk next week about where you would put that back. But just in the meantime, on the shorter term, I, I think it's kind of struggling. The technicals are starting to weaken. Yes, it could bounce, but if you are long, and I think the person who's asked me about it is long, I'm just going to say, stay in your long position, take a little bit off. That's really important. So let's just go through this one more time. The VIX index is absolutely today's system with the five materials earnings coming out tomorrow and options expiration. If the VIX index is able to drop by 30.89, it's down 7 cents. If it's able to pull back, Underneath 29.70 and stay there through the 2 to 2.30 time.